In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Throughout my years of formal education, I can remember a number of teachers who stood out as better than the others. Based on my time with them in the classroom and on the way they taught the class, it was clear that they cared not only about the proper relaying of knowledge and also about the subject itself, but they cared about their students. Throughout my years of formal education, I can remember a number of teachers who stood out as worse than the others. Based on my time with them in the classroom and on the way they taught the class, I could tell that they did not care as much about the proper relaying of knowledge or about whatever subject was being taught or at least compared to those better teachers, even about the students. Some teachers are really good, and some teachers are really not as good. And to be clear, there are far more good teachers and excellent teachers in my memory than those that don't quite make that list. And this is also true of many professions, if not all, because that's just kind of the way things go, not only in school, but also in life. As we pick up with our reading this morning, Jesus Christ, our teacher and Lord, has already called a number of his apostles. With the simple words, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, they followed him. His word and his invitation changed them, calling them away from their life's work in exchange for the promise of salvation that he brings by giving up his own life to pay for our sin. Knowing little or nothing about him other than recognizing the power behind his word, They would go on to watch on as he performed incredible miracles and eventually walked out of his own grave after being nailed to a Roman cross outside the city of Jerusalem. It started with them with that seemingly simple command, which they heard and followed. He became their teacher and their Lord from that moment on. We see in our reading for this morning, however, that Jesus' words and teachings impacted more than just these four fishermen. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. The synagogue was where God's people gathered in various cities and villages to hear his word under the Old Covenant. It was their corporate gathering space, not unlike our churches today as we live under the New Covenant. All those who were looking through the eyes of faith for the promised Messiah would come together each week to receive the blessings that God brings in worship through His Word. And so here we see Jesus on a Sabbath as He enters the worship space for God's people and as He begins to teach all those who were congregated there. Though we do not know what exactly Jesus taught on this particular day, we see that His presentation of God's Word pointed to something significant, something that stood out. Mark says, those that heard him, they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. Well, I would guess that you are like me and that you can identify a few really good or excellent teachers who stand out from your own time in your years of formal education. And I would likewise guess that you could identify a few really not good teachers who stand out from your time in school as well. A good teacher can make all the difference when faced with a difficult subject or class. A bad teacher, however, often turns students away from whatever is under discussion or being taught. In teaching, as observed by both students and parents, it is clear when a teacher truly cares about his or her work, and it is pretty clear when a teacher has little regard for the students or the work at hand. Well, this appears to be true for many, many generations, because the people who heard Jesus teach in the synagogue that morning were amazed in the way he taught. They immediately then compare him to the other religious teachers of his day, and it is clear that he stands far above them 
in the eyes of the people. By all estimations, the people who witnessed Jesus in the synagogue that day were wanting then to know more about him. Who was he? Where did he come from? From where did he draw his teachings? On whose authority does he teach? And how is it that his teachings are far superior to everything else that they had been learning and encountering? While these questions likely began to form in their minds, the answer comes from what may have been considered an unlikely source. Marx tells us, immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Well, our Lord Jesus Christ, he faced Satan himself in the wilderness for 40 days after he was baptized by John in the Jordan River. There in that moment, the Father identified Jesus as his Son, in whom he is well pleased. And Jesus was demonstrating in his baptism his willingness to suffer the punishment that human sin deserves. And he, of course, went on to complete the payment and come under the full wrath of his Father on our behalf. Though in the wilderness he resisted Satan's temptations there, he certainly knew that his encounters with the forces of evil would continue. They would not end with that period of temptation after his baptism. And here we see him being called out by name as the Holy One of God. And it is spoken by a man under demonic possession. Remember what James teaches us about such things. He says, even the demons believe and shudder. The crowd that had gone to the synagogue to hear God's word and to be pointed to the coming Messiah, they received exactly that. They not only heard about him, but they were able to hear from him and to see him and to watch him as he went head to head with evil. This demon-possessed man's cries showed all who were present that the one standing before them is worthy of the authority that they were ascribing to him. This man names Jesus and where he is from, Jesus of Nazareth. There's no room for confusion here. Whatever questions the people in the synagogue that morning had regarding Jesus' identity, well, they were cleared up quite clearly by the utterances of an unclean spirit. And now, perhaps, all those who were there went on to wonder at what Jesus would do next. Jesus rebuked the man, saying, Be silent and come out of him. Did the authority that the people there found in his teachings go any further? Was it simply words? Or did his words hold the same power as God's word? He had already built a small following of disciples with his word alone, and now he called silence down on a demon-possessed man. The crowd undoubtedly watched on in eager anticipation. The unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. So there is more to Jesus than just what he says. His words change all those who hear them. We see this in the fishermen who left their work and who followed him. We see this in the demon that left this man in the synagogue with violent convulsion and, sh and shrieking. This Jesus is like no other teacher of his day. This Jesus is far greater than all of the others who were vying for the people's attention and interest. He speaks and people recognize his authority. He speaks, and demons must comply. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. All those who witnessed Jesus' teaching and his power wanted to know more about him. They had never seen or heard anything compared to what was standing now before them. There they were in the synagogue and in the very presence of the promised Messiah, whose entrance into this world had been anticipated for many thousands of years. Jesus this morning shows himself to be worth listening to and following. His authority supersedes his peers, and the people who witnessed what took place at the synagogue this day all saw it and knew it. They had front row seats to an amazing event, and it left an impression on them. 
Mark tells us that they would not keep this information to themselves. At once, his fame spread throughout all the surrounding region of, the Gal- of Galilee. Jesus Christ, this same man, our teacher, he brings us this same release today. He calls us by name in holy baptism, and he promises to go with us every day of our lives. In this miraculous washing with water and the word, we immediately become under his protection from the evil spirits that surround us, whom we acknowledge as we confess our faith in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. By an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which begins at the baptismal font and is furthered each day as he speaks to us through his word, he assures us personally that we belong to him and to no other. Our reading shows us also that there is no middle ground when it comes to the good and the evil that we see in this life. We are cautioned against following the false teachers of this world who would point either to a salvation by our own works or just to the temporary pleasures that lead us to death and the grave. We look instead as God's people, even as those gathered at the synagogue who witnessed Jesus in his words and his actions, to the one who took evil upon himself and destroyed it. There is no greater teaching than what Jesus Christ brings us in his word and sacrament, and there is no greater teacher than Jesus Christ himself. He meets us here, and he shares these gifts with us each week in worship. The people of Jesus' day recognized him to be different, far better than the other teachers they had encountered. There are bad teachings in this world which direct us away from Jesus Christ and from the very Word of God, both the Old and the New Testament, as they point us to Jesus Christ to be our only Savior from sin. He speaks to us and He teaches us consistently through His Word, the Bible. His patience and His love is undeniable as we go forward through this life and every day that He gives us in it. He promises to walk alongside us individually as his people, but also corporately as the entire body of believers, even as he meets us physically in water, bread, and wine to assure us of his love and forgiveness. Amen. We continue now by confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page 158. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ,